Stan Gibalisco here uh, with an answer to a question that I have been asked on more than one occasion and I decided that I would provide you with a specific example of what happens when you do something like this. Suppose that you have a ground plane antenna with sloping radials each a quarter of a wavelength long and say there are three or four of them and a quarter wave radiator such that you get a 50 ohm pure resistance at the feed point of this thing. Then suppose that for some reason or another the only coaxial cable that you have is 75 ohm coax. Now an example of that kind of coax is the RG59U. I guess uh, that's what they used to call it. I don't know if they still do. But it's the kind of cable that you find in a cable or satellite television installation and also in a lot of internet connections. It's pretty easy to get. So suppose that you go to your local Radio Shack store and you don't find enough uh, good coaxial cable in the 50 ohm impedance but the 75 ohm coaxial cable is available. I, I can even get that stuff at my local uh, department store a couple of blocks away here in the Black Hills. That stuff is very easy to get. So suppose you get it. You get 100 feet of it or something like that. 75 ohm coax. You connect that to your radio. Well, what's your radio actually going to see in terms of impedance? This is not a one-to-one -one standing wave ratio along this line. As a matter of fact, it is 75 divided by 50 to 1. Let's just pull up our calculator and figure that out. I believe that it turns out to be 1.5 to 1. So that is what we're getting for a standing wave ratio right there. Now suppose that we connect a 50 ohm SWR bridge here. A 50 ohm SWR bridge. Is that going to read 1.5 to 1? Well, as a matter of fact, the answer is no, it won't. And it's more complicated than that. The reading that you get is going to vary depending on where in the line you place this meter. In particular, if you place this meter at any whole number multiple of one half wavelength away from your load, then you will in fact see 50 ohms at that point no matter what the characteristic impedance of the coax, because at half-wave intervals, purely resistive impedances tend to repeat themselves in any transmission line. Now remember that you have to take the velocity factor of the line into account. So suppose that this is a half an electrical wavelength. You are going to get a reading of 1 to 1 on that meter. But now suppose that instead you move that meter to a quarter wavelength away from the antenna. Or better yet, that your whole antenna, your whole antenna feed line happens to be three quarters of a wavelength. At integral multiples, at odd whole number multiples of a quarter wavelength from the load, you are going to get an, a pure resistive impedance that depends upon a particular formula. And here's that formula that I've outlined in other videos. The characteristic impedance of the line is the geometric mean of the input and the output impedances. Well, we happen to know this characteristic impedance right here in this example where the transmitter is three quarters or one quarter or five fourths or seven fourths or any uh, odd number of fourths of a wavelength away that is a 75 ohm value if we consider r out to be the antenna 
we know that that is 50 ohms. This is our situation. R out here, R sub out, 50 ohms, characteristic impedance, 75 ohms. And we connect our meter here and we're going to get a pure resistance. What's that resistance going to be? Well, we can solve this formula easily enough. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll find out what that pure resistance is going to be. We need to square each side of this equation. So let's square 75. We get 5625. All right. 5625 equals 50 times R sub n. Now we can divide 5625 by 50. That gives us 112.5. So we know now that this resistance is 112.5 ohms. So now let's go back here and imagine that we connect our meter at the radio three-fourths of a wavelength away from the antenna. It's going to show a pure resistance of 112.5 ohms. So it is a 50 ohm impedance bridge, or designed for a 50 ohm line. So suppose now we can figure out the SWR easily enough. 112.5 divided by... Well, the actual SWR is going to be 100 and, um, is going to be 1.5 to 1 all along this entire line but what the meter is going to see is this 112.5 so if we divide that by 50 we're going to get a 2.25 to 1 reading there so this meter at the half wavelength point is going to show 1 to 1 but at the radio three quarters of a wavelength away it's going to show 2.25 to 1 but the true SWR on this 75 ohm line is 1.5 to 1. So clearly, when you ask the question, can you expect an accurate reading when you use a 50 ohm SWR meter in a 75 ohm transmission line? The answer is clearly no, you can't. So forget about that. <laughs> it isn't going to work. Stan Gibalisco signing off for now, saying 73 and so long.